Hello everyone, my name is Hong Jia from the University of New South Wales. I would like to present our paper, Condor, Mobile Golf Swing Tracking via Sensor Fusion Using Conditional Generative and Visceral Networks. Mobile computing is impact many areas, and sports analytics is no exception. Sports analytics has drawn many attention in recent years. It is reported that sports analytics will reach 8.7 billion by 2027. And sports analytics also draws attention from newspapers such as Forbes and uh, also the Academy. For example, MIT has launched a sports analytics conference. So what is sports analytics? Uh, we take golf swing as an example. From the image, we can see that two players uh, analyze how good their swing in the studio by various of sensors. Uh, in sports analytics, swing tracking is a key information in many sports such as golf. Um, this paper asks that can we use off-the-shelf mobile sensors to do golf to do golf swing tracking? Um, let's first look at an example. A typical example of golf swing is consists of five stages. The setup, top of swing, impact, follow through, and finish. The swing speed could reach 67 meters per second for professional golfers and uh, around 45 meter meters per second for beginners. So this pose very uh, posed very challenging for conventional solutions which only relies on IMU or depth sensor. Um, simply because IMU is um, is famous is, is notorious of its accumulated error where the depth sensor is um, usually occluded in many stages. In golf swing for example usually occluded in top of swing and the photo through. So um, we proposed method to um, using sensor fusion of these two sensors um, and uh, tailor a deep neural network to uh, learn their representation and their relationship to, uh, so that we could recover um, an accurate string tracking. Um, by doing so, we first using a feature extractor to learn the features from the uh, sensor data then we use the um, regression flow to um, recover its 3D tracking trajectory and follow uh, after a filter block. And we're also using a discrimination flow to detach, detect the uh, subject domain so that such kind of model could be used in the unseen subject. Here's our configuration. Uh, from the image in the left, we can see that our system consists of a uh, depth sensor, which is the RealSense D435, and a smartphone, which is Samsung S7. And we use the Samsung GIS as the smartwatch or smart band. Um, we can take it as the IMU because it has the um, IMU signals inside of the watch. And we use the markers under the branches to um, give it um, its labels, its ground truths, and we collect the data um, based on a real clock. And um, in the configuration, we set sets the IMU sampling rate as 100 hertz. And um, in IMU, we collect three axes of acceleration and three axes of gyroscope. We did not use the compass uh, because many of the of the shelf um, smartwatch did not have the compass. For example, the uh, Moto 360 and Samsung GS2. And uh, another reason did not use it, the Compass is because it has a relative very low um, sampling rate. Um, we took the depth sensor sampling rate as 30 uh, frames per second. And uh, our ground choice is the object track, which is sampling rate sits 120 frames per second. The ground truth um, object track is consists of multiple high precision and high speed uh, cameras. In the data collection, we uh, recruit uh, 12 subjects, uh, include um, 10 males and 2 females. And um, uh, among them, there are three professional golf players. Their ages range from 26 to 35. The height is ranging from 160 to 178 centimeters and the weights ranging from the 
um, 52 to 74 uh, kilograms. And we collect our data for four weeks uh, to avoid injury and fatigue. Uh, we shut out all the IME depth sensor and ground truth when the subjects feel tired or want to stop. Um, after the data collection, we pre-process the data. Um, for the IME data, we use two order low pass filter to uh, remove its noise. And uh, for depth sensor, we also use a uh, uh, low pass filter to um, move its um, noise. And uh, here is an example of the one swing after the data clean. And uh, here we introduce our um, deep neural networks. It consists of a feature extractor, a regression layer, and a domain discriminator. So um, the, uh, the, the feature extractor first takes the sensor data and uh, the ground truth from the abstract and the domain information from the subject numbers uh, as input. We feed the sensor data and uh, by um, a tailored um, uh, depth-wise separate, separated uh, depth-wise convolutional neural networks. And uh, then we concan them and uh, add a shuffle, uh, feature shuffle layer to uh, make them more robust. And uh, then we feed by a, a one by one, one by one convolutional layer to uh, reduce its size into the and it also reshape it into the uh, regression layer. Um, the output of the feature extractor is consists of the um, filtered sensor data and uh, the ground truth uh, of the swing trajectory and the domain information which did not change. Um, then we um, put the, um, the the filtered features from the sensor data into the regression error and uh, followed by a ALS team block to feel, to do the, the regression. And uh, then after after that, there is followed by a field block. Um, in, the, in the final output is the 3D trajectory. The whole layer has been optimized by uh, the um, ground truth um, the real the swing trajectory from the um, the opt track for for the field block uh, we use the uh, Savasky Golden the SG filter in our experiment we tried several um, parameters and uh, in final we choose the M uh, and J as the 13 and 3 respectively so then we uh, use the subject independent discriminator to discriminate the subject domains. Um, by doing so, we could reach a model that could predict um, the string trajectory without the subject information. But uh, we reached this through um, a, a deep, deep neural network, and uh, it took the um, filtered sensor data and the domain information as input and uh, optimize through the real um, domain um, uh, information and uh, optimize the weights of the neural network. Um, the loss function we designed uh, is consists of three parts. The first is the Huber, uh, Huber loss. Um, compared with the um, mean absolute error loss, uh, Huber loss is um, more robust, and we use this cosine similarity to uh, rectify the span of the string tracking um, during the training, and uh, then we use the um, uh, domain loss. And then the final loss is consists of these three loss. We introduce the parameter alpha to balance the first two um, losses. In our experiment, we select the alpha equals to 0 0.6. Um, we use two evaluation metrics, the mean square error and mean absolute error. So here's the evaluation results. Um, for different loss functions, we see that uh, our proposed method, uh, proposed loss, um, outperformed the mean square error, mean 
absolute error cosine distance um, separately and for parallel as well. And uh, for the model comparison, we compare the uh, state of art BIST model using the IME only called IONET. And uh, for fear comparison, also compare such model into the uh, sensor fusion case and uh, um, other methods as baseline such as uh, SVR and ASTM. Uh, uh, you know, we can see the result that uh, Condor outperform other methods and it could reach 6.57 centimeters error. Um, in ablation study, we study the how the layer parameters in ASTM uh, impacts the whole performance. We see that um, using the BISTM did not improve too much of the um, model performance. And uh, uh, in our case, we selected 128 layers of the um, single layer ASTM. So here's uh, some qualitative results. We see that um, for Kinect only, there are many uh, typical occluded period. And uh, for the IONET, which is the IMU based uh, deep neural network, we see that in many stages it's still not recovered the whole. Uh, string tracking and uh, simply using the um, depth sensor yeah, as we discussed it's has many occluded faces and our proposed method uh, has very close to the um, ground truth accuracy after uh, the training so here are also some creative results for the whole swing we see that proposed method is very close to the ground truth and uh, simply using the IMU is suffered from this cumulative error, especially for two stages at the top of swing and finish. And depth sensor, um, we can see that uh, simply using depth sensor is suffered from the occlusion. Uh, we also analyzed the sensor dominance um, uh, during different stages. Um, we reached this by um, set zero for different sensors and, and pass to our trained model and see how the uh, results compares with other sensors. And uh, from the one swing example, we see that uh, it's clear in the stage one, two, and five, it's um, the, the depth sensor took its dominance, which is not surprising because in, in these stages, the depth sensor, are, depth sensor are not occluded. While when the Swing is occluded in the stage three and four. We see that IMU took the dominance. Um, we also visualize the all swings um, of the sensor's dominance. We see that um, similarly in stage one, two, and five, the depth sensor took the dominance, and uh, stage uh, three and four, the IMU sensor took the dominance. Um, we also investigate how the subject domains impact the model performance. We see that uh, within more uh, subjects domains being involved, the model has more better, uh, could reach better um, presentation. And we see that within 11 domains all evolved, we could reach um, accuracy within um, 10 centimeters. Um, though there are some variations between, for example, three subjects to four subjects, but clearly the, um, the, the, the image shows that, uh, the figure shows that with more subject domains being involved, we will clearly obtain a better result. Uh, so uh, if we collect more data sets, we could reach um, better uh, results. Uh, we also investigated how the energy consumption um, in our proposed model. Uh, we see that um, Condor um, has only 60, uh, 0 0.6 remaining um, um, flops, and uh, they also have um, 9.3 the um, number of parameters. And uh, we test the model through the core ML in the iOS uh, 13. Uh, on the iPhone X, we see that uh, for each um, each uh, reference, it cost only 4.56 milliseconds and uh, cost only uh, 152 uh, millijoule.
which implies that only close to 1% of iPhone X battery can support more than um, 590 Condor swing predictions. Um, that's all of it. Thank you and uh, welcome any questions.